Hey, this is Mel Strong, and this is a little extra help for people who are still struggling uh, to understand the difference between a dew point and relative humidity and how they're related. So I'm going to use this little interactive tool from the University of Wisconsin. So I've put a link up on Learn and uh, on my website, so you can play with this too. And so over on the right-hand side here, we're going to ignore the left for now. On the right-hand side, we've got a thermometer, and we've got dew point, and we've got relative humidity. And as I, I can make changes in either the temperature or the dew point, and it will show me how that changes relative humidity. Now, when we did this in my previous lecture, if you watched my lecture on relative humidity, we calculated it with mixing ratios. Now, we could have also done it with dew points. Remember, both mixing ratio and dew point tell you how much water is in the air. They're just two different ways of reporting the same thing. But it's the calculation to get to relative humidity is much more difficult uh, if you only have dew point. So this doesn't have mixing ratio in it, but it's the same concept. So right now, the temperature is a little bit above 60 degrees. The dew point looks like it's a little below 40, and our relative humidity is 38%. Okay, so if I raise the temperature, so I just drag this up. Notice what's happening to the relative humidity. As that temperature goes up, the relative humidity goes down. So to relate this to what we've done before with mixing ratios, we said the top of the fraction was the current mixing ratio. That's not changing because dew point's not changing. Remember, dew point and mixing ratio have to change together. If I add more water to the air, they both go up. If I subtract water from the air, they both go down. The fact that dew point is not changing tells me that the amount of water in the air is still a constant. But I'm in, had, I increased the temperature just then. And so again, to relate that to what we've seen before, I'm dividing by the maximum possible mixing ratio. And the maximum possible mixing ratio goes up as temperature goes up. Dividing by a bigger number gets me a smaller answer. So as I raise the temperature, you saw the relative humidity uh, decreased. So I will continue to raise up the temperature. We'll make it as hot as we can make it. Relative humidity goes down to 5%. Okay, so watch what happens when I cool it down. So I'm going to cool down the temperature. So I cool it down and I cool it down and notice the relative humidity is increasing. The dew point's not changing because I'm not taking water from the air. Okay, so I'm going to drop it further, cool it, cool it, and notice that the relative humidity continues to go higher and higher and so now as I as I'm getting closer and closer to the dew point, the dew point's a little below 40, I'm getting I'm getting close. Notice how high my relative humidity is. So I'm gonna drop it even further. Drop, drop. Okay, so now relative humidity is hundred percent. Temperature and dew point are the same. Okay. So I'm gonna to continue to cool it further. So we would be making uh, dew at this point, even though the picture shows uh, snow, that's not quite correct because we're above freezing, but we would be making dew. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower the temperature. So as I lower the temperature, notice what happens to the dew point. The dew point has to go down with it. But the relative humidity stays at exactly 100%. Right? So I can, now we're below freezing for sure. We're making frost. But I'll keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. And as long as I keep making it colder and colder, the dew point has to go lower and lower because I'm taking water out of the air and I'm putting it onto the ground. At first it was liquid and then it's frozen. But that entire time, the relative humidity was staying at 100%. So now let's say I warm it up. So now the dew point is really low. The dew point looks like it's about negative 10. And as I warm the temperature up, you see the relative humidity rapidly drop. Now, this is not completely realistic because normally what happens if you if we made dew in the more overnight and the dew is sitting on the grass, then when the sun comes up the next day, that dew evaporates back into the air, at least most of it does, and the dew point would go back up. What this is doing is once we lowered the dew point, it's keeping it lowered, right? So that's a, not quite what happens in nature usually. So here's another thing I could do. So let me crank up the temperature to 60. Relative humidity is 4%. If I add water to the air, I increase dew point, right? So I can crank up the dew point 
And as I crank up the dew point, relative humidity is also increasing. Now in this case, it's increasing because we think, again, back to the definition of relative humidity that we use with, with mixing ratios. The top part of that fraction was the, uh, the current mixing ratio. How do you increase the current mixing ratio? You add more water to the air. You add more grams of water to the air. Increasing dew point is the same thing. If I add water to the air, dew point goes up. So we don't see a process here. We have to imagine there's someone off the screen that's adding water to the air somehow as I crank this up. So there's some mechanism that we can't see that as I crank this up, I'm adding dew, I'm adding water vapor to the air and the dew point consequently is going up. The temperature is the same, but as I add water, relative humidity goes up with it. So I go up and up and up and up and up. And then when I get up to about there, I am 100% relative humidity. Temperature and dew point are the same. If I, it is physically impossible for me to have dew point above temperature. So the way this software handles this is if I try to crank dew point higher, it also just raises the temperature so that you don't have uh, math that makes no sense. But in reality, if I was actually adding water to the air, the temperature does not magically go up. Okay, that's kind of a uh, limitation of this of this uh, software uh, simulation. So here, dew temperature uh, 80 degrees, dew point 80 degrees, relative humidity 100%. This would be a pretty miserable place to uh, live right now if you had this because you, as we talked about with the um, evaporation lecture, your sweat would not evaporate. So from here, if I cool it down, I'm generating uh, condensation, making do, making do, making do. My relative humidity, again, stays at 100%. Then I can raise the temperature back up. And again, the dew point stays there uh, because we have no mechanism to add or subtract water from the air. So this is a little tool that you can play with. Um, maybe it'll help. On the left-hand side, there is another thing where what they're doing is they've got an indoor thermometer. So, so both of these things are outdoor. There's an indoor thermometer and an indoor uh, relative humidity. And you can do things like you can uh, change the temperature. You can turn the air conditioner on and off. And you can see what the effect is uh, on the indoor relative humidity. So you can play with that if you want. You can open the door and let in some outside air and see how that changes. The, the point being that um, often we have the same air outside as we have inside, right? It's usually the same air. And if I have a relative humidity uh, gauge inside, it'll have one reading on it. And I have a relative, gauge, uh, relative humidity gauge outside, it'll have a different reading on it. But the air is the same. Why are the readings different? Because the temperatures are different. That's why. And that's what playing with this allows you to allows you to mess with that okay so i don't know if that helps or not but you can go and play with this to your heart's content and see if you can understand the relationship between dew point temperature and relative humidity